This is going to be verse by verse of 2 Corinthians chapter 11. So go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and look at verse 1. It says, Would to God you would bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. So Paul says to bear with him a little bit in his folly. And he's referring to the fact that he's going to be yet again giving some of his credentials. Paul knows that it's foolish to boast. However, at this time, it's necessary because so many people are trying to discredit him to the point that he's losing his converts to deceivers. So he says in verse 2, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So Paul is jealous over the Corinthians. They have been led astray by men who teach false doctrine. Paul is the one who led them to the Lord and presented them as a chaste virgin. The bride of Christ is a chaste virgin. And jealousy is a good thing. For example, if a man never gets jealous for his wife, then it could be a sign he doesn't love her like he should. And God himself is a jealous God, as it says in Exodus thirty four fourteen, For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Exodus 20 and verse 5, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, thy, for I the Lord thy God am a jealous God. So God is jealous, and Paul gets jealous for his converts who are being led astray by false teachers. So he's having to give his credentials. In verse 3 he says, But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. So the same way the devil came to Eve and tempted her and tricked her is the same way that men were coming to the Corinthians and smooth-talking them. They were taking away from the simplicity in Christ. The gospel is simple. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, according to Acts 16.31. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You add to that and you're messing with the simplicity in Christ. 2 Corinthians 11.4 For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye pre receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Now the Mormons... The Jehovah's Witnesses and the rest of the cults, they have another Jesus. They many times claim that Jesus was only a man and not the Son of God. That's another Jesus when you take away his godhood. The cults like the Jesus, uh, or the, the cults like the Church of Christ preach another gospel. They add works to the simple gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection. The only works in the gospel were done by Jesus Christ himself. He did the work. Now verse 4, for, for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. The Corinthians were putting up, they were bearing with these people, they were putting up with these men who were bringing another gospel, another spirit, and another Jesus. They were bearing with them. Now, verse 5, Paul says, For I suppose I was not a whit behind the very chiefest apostles. So Paul knows that he's nothing, but yet he, he knows he's no more of nothing than the rest of the apostles. He's not behind them in anything. He says, But though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge, but we have been throughly made manifest among you in all things. So Paul was rude in speech. Not necessarily a jerk, but a rough talker. In Acts 23, 3, he calls someone a whited wall. He called people fools. Even though he was very educated, he didn't talk educated. He didn't use political correctness. He probably spoke as rough as Peter, who was a fisherman and called people un, uh, unlearned and I ignorant and everything like that. And people called Peter unlearned and ignorant. In 2 Corinthians eleven seven. 7, it says, I have I committed an offense in abasing myself that you might be exalted because I have preached to you the gospel of God freely? Paul never charged the Corinthians for his preaching. It was completely free. He wasn't selling his sermons for $8 apiece. He would pay them to listen to him probably. 
2 uh, Corinthians 11, 8 says, I robbed other churches, taking wages of them to do you service. So Paul wasn't one of these people just trying to get money all the time and things like that. And you, there's a lot of preachers, that's their, their main concern is getting money. How much money can they get off of something? That's all that they're, they think about. So to the point that, I mean, they'll copyright their sermons, and if you put them out there, then they'll they'll get you for copyright and stuff like that. I like what Denny Castle did, where a long time ago he said that he he put on the back of the CDs that if you don't give these out for free, then then they'll sue you. <laughs> that, that's a good thing to do, you know. If they if the people that got the CDs didn't give them out for free, then they'd be upset. Not the other way around, where if you buy the CD and then you you give it to somebody or start sharing it, then they'll get you for copyright. But uh, Danny also said that he would pay somebody to listen to him preach, not the other way around. He doesn't want for people to have to pay to listen to him. That just doesn't make much sense to me. For somebody to for you to for somebody to have to pay you to hear you preach, that makes no sense. We're living in a time where you can put out every sermon that you have for free on the internet and you do it for free. I mean, it doesn't cost anything to put something on YouTube if you've got the internet, which you probably have it anyway. So just put the audio to a picture, put it on YouTube, let people listen to it. You don't have to be making money off of everything that you do. But it says in 1 Corinthians 9, 14, Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. So, that's what he said. That's what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, 14. It's good and right to give money or and material things to the people who's feeding you spiritually. But that's not the main thing of why they're doing it. And he says in 2 Corinthians 11, 9, And when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man. For that which was lacking to me, the brethren which came from Macedonia supplied. And in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. So when Paul was with the Corinthians and wanted, the Corinthians never kept him up or, or anything like that. The brethren from Macedonia gave him what he needed to survive. And Paul was never a burden to the Corinthians in any way. They never had to give him anything. But the false apostles who crept in were most likely taking a lot of things from the Corinthians. And Paul says in verses 10 and 11, As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth. So God knows that Paul loves the Corinthians. And that he's just simply bragging on his own credentials to show the Corinthians that he's the real deal. And they're glorying in the flesh, so he he's just giving them his credentials. They like to glory in the flesh, so he's showing them that he's done some things in the flesh just as much as all these other apostles. Now verse 12, But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. So Paul is bragging so that he can cut off occasion from them which desire occasion. He's going to prove that they are false apostles. He, as he says in verse 13, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. These are the evil transformers. They look like one thing, but they are really another thing. I remember before I was saved, I would feel the need to turn over a new leaf. I would turn on the TBN network and, and see Creflo Dollar. I thought this guy is a saint. And, and I even went as far as wishing I could just be him so that, I, so that I wouldn't have to go to hell. You see how crazy a lost person thinks? I mean, I knew I was going to hell, and I wished I was someone else like that guy so that I wouldn't have to go to hell. I thought Creflo Dollar and these... TV preachers were the greatest Christians in the world because they were preaching on TV. But it turns out, after I got saved, I, I, I found out the truth and I realized these guys are crooks. These are money-hungry, false prophets. And I wouldn't trust them with my dog if I had one. I mean, he might try to sell the dog's body parts or something. I have no respect for these people like Kenneth Copeland and T.D. Jakes. They are 
making merchandise of people as the false prophets were doing to the Corinthians. They are nothing more than deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And the Bible says in Jeremiah 48, 10, Cursed be he that doeth the Lord's work, doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. So we should read the Bible enough and know our doctrine enough to know when a person is a false apostle. The church of Ephesus knew in Revelation 2, 2. It says they tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars. Now Paul says in verse 14, And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Satan is another transformer. He was the anointed cherub that now appears as an angel of light when he transforms from his natural state of Leviathan, the great red dragon. He is the Leviathan of Job 41. He's the great red dragon of Revelation 12, 3. And this is why sometimes things that are evil appear good. That's the devil appearing as an angel of light. And Paul goes on to say in verse 15, Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Why does it surprise you that wicked men pretend to be good? It shouldn't surprise you. But know this, they will get what's coming to them. In verse 16, he, Paul says, I say again that no man think me a fool, if otherwise yet as a fool receive me that I may boast myself a little. See, Paul keeps throwing in these sentences about how foolish it is to brag. Paul isn't a fool. He's bragging for the right reasons. However, he's willing to be seen as a fool by the Corinthians if they would just listen to what he says. That's why he says, yet as a fool receive me. He knows that they look at the flesh. They're looking at the outward appearance of men. They're looking at men's credentials and going by that. So that's why he's giving his credentials. Some Christians won't listen to a man unless he has a whole list of accomplishments. They won't listen to a random Christian. So Paul is saying, let no man think me a fool because he's about to give more of his credentials. Because Paul knows that Proverbs 27 two says, let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth, a stranger and not thine own lips. So Paul is having to remind the Corinthians that he has made full proof of his ministry. But he doesn't want to look, at, look like a fool at the same time, so he keeps adding these sentences about how foolish it is to brag. 2 Corinthians eleven seventeen. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, but as it were foolishly in this confidence of boasting. So Paul knows that biblically speaking, he is nothing compared to Jesus Christ. And that if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself, according to Galatians 6, 3. He knows that when the average man talks good about himself, it is nothing more than foolish boasting. And when the average man boasts, it is not because he is trying to keep the respect of others, but because he loves his own self. But that's not why Paul's doing it. He doesn't love his own self in that way. Verse 18 says, Seeing that many glory after the flesh... I will glory also. See, the, the Corinthians were glorying after the flesh, after the credentials of other men. Just like men do today, they look for degrees in Bible colleges. And how many people are in a man's church and what great accomplishments he's done in the ministry. They glory after the flesh. But Paul had even more credentials than them all. He said in verse 19, For you suffer fools gladly, seeing ye yourselves are wise. So Paul's being a little bit sarcastic here. And since the Corinthians suffer with these foolish false apostles, meaning he put they put up with them, they put up with these ministers of Satan and they're bragging that they do, he figures he can give his resume and maybe they'll finally listen to him when he gives them his resume. He doesn't really think that they're wise, as he's saying. He believes they themselves are foolish. So Paul is being sarcastic here. He's saying the Corinthians are so wise that they bear with these fools, these idiots who claim to be something when they're nothing. In verse 20 says, For you suffer. If a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. See how uh, sarcastic he's being? He's like, you would put up with these guys if they just come up to you and smack you in the face. These men that crept in were bringing them into bondage, just like Second Peter two, eighteen and 19 talk about. It says, For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escape from them who live in error, while they promise them liberty, 
They themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage. And that's what these people were doing to the Corinthians. Second Corinthians 11.20 For you suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a man smite you on the face. So these men devour the Corinthians because Satan walks around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he uses his ministers to catch his prey. Paul says if a man take of you. These guys were taking off the Corinthians and Paul never got a dime. From the Corinthians. That's why he said that he's not burdened them. He's not been burdensome to them. Paul says if a man exalt himself. And Luke 14, 11, For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Watch out for people who exalt themselves. Before every sermon for no apparent reason. Paul is having to exalt himself for a good reason here. But this isn't something he does before every sermon. Like a lot of these guys do. Paul is saying these guys could smack them in the face and they would bear with them. They could smack their mama and they would still think they were the greatest thing since sliced bread. That's how deceived they were. In verse 21, I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. Howbeit wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. So Paul is bold also. Paul is so bold that they said his letters were weighty and powerful. He says, wherein soever any is bold, Paul is bold also. Whatever these guys have, Paul also has it and has it better. And now he's going to really get into his credentials here. He says in verse 22, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. He said in Philippians 3, 5, he was circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, is touching the law of Pharisee. He's given his credentials here. Paul was an educated Jewish Pharisee before salvation. He knew the law backwards and forwards. Not only that, but he knows the New Testament doctrine better than anybody because the truth of our New Testament doctrine was revealed directly to Paul. He says there in verse 23, Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool, I am more. And labors more abundant, and stripes above measure, and prisons more frequent, and deaths oft. Paul is much more of a minister and labors more abundant. Paul wasn't even married, so he had time to serve God more than the average man. He had time to labor in the word and doctrine. This made him worthy of more praise than the next guy. Because in 1 Timothy 5.17 it says, Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. So he says... Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool, I am more. And labor is more abundant, and stripes above measure. Uh, in Galatians 6, 17, he says, He bears in his body the marks of the Lord Jesus. In prisons more frequent. When Paul came to town, he didn't check out the hotels. He checked out the prison houses. In deaths often. He was willing to risk death daily and also die daily to the flesh. As he said in 1 Corinthians 15.31, I die daily. He said in 2 Corinthians 11.24, Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. So he got 39 stripes. Talk about pain. Talk about living with pain. Talk about your body being permanently scarred for life. He literally did bear in his body the marks of the Lord Jesus. He said in 2 Corinthians 4, 9 and 10, Persecuted but not forsaken, cast down but not destroyed, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. He lived what he preached. Verse 25, Thrice was I beaten with rods. The saying, I'm going to beat you with a stick, took on a whole new meaning with Paul. He said, Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. So no wonder Paul's bodily presence was weak. He'd been beat so many times, but he kept getting back up. If he was a boxer, he would never get KO'd. That's why he said, So fight I, not as one that beateth the air. In 1 Corinthians 9.26, Paul said he fought with beasts at Ephesus. In a spiritual battle, Paul would be a featherweight champ beating up the heavyweight champs. Uh, the devil 
uh, tried to defeat Paul, and he did a couple times. But Paul had the word of God, and he was a spiritual heavyweight champ, even though he was probably weighed as much as a featherweight. In 2 Corinthians eleven twenty five, it says, Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep. So Paul was suffering physical shipwreck. He had a titanic experience three times. While the ministers coming to the Corinthians were just having shipwrecks concerning the faith. As it says in 1 Timothy 1, 19, Holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. While these false apostles were making shipwrecks of the faith, Paul was going through literal physical shipwrecks when he was giving out the gospel. You can make a mess with Bible doctrine if you don't know the Bible. You can make a mess with Bible doctrine if you don't know the right doctrine, but you have a decept if you know the right doctrine and you have a deceptive motive, you're going to make a mess. That is where many of Satan's ministers come in. They many times know the right doctrine. They make shipwreck of it on purpose. These are the ones who don't suffer sh physical shipwreck like Paul. He says in verse 26, In journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by mine own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. So Paul was in journeyings often. Like my pastor is always going around from hospital to hospital, from house to house, giving out the gospel, checking up on people. It's a 24-hour thing. Paul was in perils of robbers on the land. He was in perils of water on the ships. He was in perils by the heathen, those unbelievers that hated him. In perils in the city where there were a lot of people. There were a lot of people that wanted him dead. When he was in the wilderness, he was in perils there, wild animals. In perils among false brethren, he says. Some people pretend to be your friend, but they are only placed there by the devil for a snare. Verse 27, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. So he preached when he was tired. He preached when he was in pain. He preached when he was hungry and thirsty. He went without food voluntarily and sometimes because he just didn't have any food. He was in cold and nakedness. The Lord didn't keep his shoes and clothes from wearing out like he did Israel in the wilderness. He let Paul suffer through some things. Verse 28, Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. So the things that are without are what he listed in the previous verses and lost people. But those weren't the only things he was dealing with. He was also dealing with the care of all the churches. Paul didn't just win people to the Lord. He also followed up with his converts and church plants. So he had the care of all the churches, all the people that had already gotten saved. He says in verse 29 and 30, Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is offended and I burn not? If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmity. So Paul now begins to brag about even his own weaknesses. Sometimes a person's weaknesses prove they are an able minister because they keep going through the infirmities. This proves they are tough enough for the job. He says in verse 31, The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed is forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. Even if the Corinthians don't believe him, God knows he's not lying. God saw all the events take place. Verse 32 and 33, In Damascus, the governor under Aratus, the king, kept the city of the Damascens with the garrison, desirous to apprehend me, and threw a window in a basket with a let down by the wall, and escaped his hands. Paul was a true basket case. He was crazy over the gospel. Festus told Paul, Much learning doth make thee mad. Paul was not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. That's Paul's credentials here in 2 Corinthians 11, proving to the Corinthians that he is a true apostle, and he's a lot better than these false apostles running around making merchandise of them, bringing them into bondage.